Hello everyone, thank you for joining us in our pre-recorded Drone Safety Day webinar series. Drone Safety Day is aimed at promoting safe drone practices and exploring the cool and innovative ways drones are being used across Canada. My name is Shaheen Chohan and I'm a policy analyst working on the remotely piloted aircraft systems or drone task force at Transport Canada. Transport Canada is the department of the federal government responsible for regulating and developing transportation policies and programs, including those relating to drones. I'm joined by Nicholas Brodeur, Innovation Engineer at Bell Textron Canada, a helicopter manufacturer that's developing drones based in Mirabel, Quebec. Hi Nick, thanks for joining us. Hi Shane, thank you for having me. I guess we'll start off with learning more about what Bell is doing, so why don't you tell us about what type of drones Bell is developing? Absolutely. Uh, Bell is in the process of developing uh, our future vertical lift systems uh, to address the needs of mobility, uh, be it moving people, cargo, and even data, and using sustainable technology. Uh, we right now have a family line of uh, the Nexus aircraft, mm -hmm. the first one being the 6HX, which is a six-ducted fan hybrid electric air passenger carrying taxi, and the 4EX, which is a four-ducted fan all-electric passenger air taxi. We're also in the process of developing uh, what's called the Autonomous Pod Transport APT, which is an all-electric vertical takeoff landing vehicle, a cargo carrying drone essentially. Bell Textron Canada, located in Mirabel, Quebec, as you mentioned, is an integral part of these advanced air mobility projects. Uh, myself, I've been involved in drone development um, and flight operations in Canada, and uh, in particular, a few years ago, we developed uh, a, a demonstration platform known as Hydra, uh, which was a technology demonstrator to advance things like distributed propulsion, flight controls, and autonomous solutions for unconventional aircraft. So I guess my question is, why drones? Why not just regular helicopters? Drones, drones provide uh, added, added benefits that some other vehicles don't have, whether it be helicopters or whether it be um, ground-based vehicles. And the, one, of the, one of the main ones I can think of is, uh, is safety. They can transport goods, they can transport people, um, and they can do it under conditions uh, that may be uh, difficult or dangerous for manned aircraft. For example, uh, assisting in fire, firefighting, um, search and rescue operations, uh, types of conditions where it may be difficult for an aircraft to dispatch, uh, you may be able to dispatch a drone in those conditions. Another advantage, um, well, it's not an advantage, advantage over a helicopter, but it's an advantage over ground-based infrastructure, is accessing the third dimension. Medical deliveries, for example, the drone could overfly a congested area and deliver that um, up to three times faster than a ground-based vehicle. And so finally, uh, they can also provide um, air service for remote areas, communities where, where um, aircraft are maybe limited in getting in, and bringing in critical supplies for uh, the communities there which we have a lot of remote communities in Canada. Absolutely, yeah. So it definitely seems like drones offer a multitude of advantages over traditional aviation. Do you find that there's any misconceptions about drone use? Absolutely, there's definitely uh, a lot of misconceptions I think about drones. Uh, one of the number one that, I, that comes to mind is that uh, drone delivery is here today. Uh, the truth is it's happening under very specific and controlled conditions. Um, and there's a lot of maturation still of that technology before it becomes mainstream for the public. Uh, another misconception though is that uh, drones are toys and they don't have the level of robustness that manned aviation does um, and the truth is I think the technology is there, it's just once it gets to the point um, of maturity we'll be able to execute it to the same level of safety as uh, manned aviation. Right, makes sense. Um, so previously you mentioned your autonomous pod transport project, so maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that. Absolutely. Um, APT is a family of cargo carrying drones. It is an all-electric biplane tail-sitting aircraft, so it's a lot to kind of digest, but it essentially uh, takes off and lands like a helicopter and then converts onto its side, on its wing like an airplane. And what that allows it to do is it operates much quieter when it's flying on wing and it'll get you much more range and payload, so increases the output of, from a traditional drone. Currently it exists in two forms, uh, the first one being App 20, carries 20 pounds, hence the name App 20. Uh, it has a gross weight of about 55 pounds, so that falls under the Part 9 regulations, Part 107 in the US. Um, and the other aircraft is called App 70, and as you probably guessed, that's a 70 pound payload. Uh, and that aircraft has a max gross weight of about 320 pounds. Um, to date, uh, the APT, the APT uh, 70 aircraft has flown approximately 283 flights altogether, uh, and that includes visual, beyond visual line of sight. As I mentioned, it's a bit of a research and development phase right now, but we've been working with both 
uh, military and uh, commercial uh, cl potential clients on their requirements uh, and we can see it's got great great use cases uh, in uh, obviously as I mentioned delivery uh, search and rescue manufacturing uh, ship to shore kind of operations uh, and more so uh, there's a lot of things that can do out there but we aren't kind of carrying out any of those operations as we speak today mm -hmm. you've got a wide range going on for sure absolutely so it definitely seems like there's a variety of applications in across North America I guess specifically how do you see Bell's work contributing to the Canadian market that's a good question um, Bell, Bell has been quite involved in what is in, in the new unmanned sector that's this, this industry that's, that's coming out in Canada and of course the rest of the world as you mentioned um, and it's allowed us to create new jobs in Mirabel specific to this application. Um, we also work closely with uh, local startups, academia, government agencies on these type of projects so it brings a lot of that collaboration together. Um, and what we're really hoping to do here is develop these skills uh, here on Canadian soil um, and advance those technologies. Uh, we've also been exploring partnerships uh, for in Canada for the use case of APT and that'll help develop the technology as well as uh, the regulations here in Canada. So here we are on Drone Safety Day, so I guess I need to ask, what does drone safety mean to Bell? Uh, Bell looks at drone safety the same way we looked at manned aviation safety. Uh, from a certification standpoint, um, it's all it's usually risk-based. Uh, systems, structures, they need to be designed to a level of robustness uh, to meet re reliability targets uh, for critical systems on, on the aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, a drone is no different in that aspect, uh, especially if you want to do a higher risk operation such as over an urban community. Mm -hmm. So how does Bell ensure safety in, in the drones that you develop? So. Uh, Safety in our drone development starts from the conceptual design. We look at how the how the the human the human machine interaction is, um, the battery safety. Um, we also look at uh, system design to incorporate safety. Um, we apply our standard quality assurance and best practices, um, and we also uh, develop some of our own uh, methods for things like materials or systems that don't exist yet. So how we can how we can test them and, and keep them safe for the user. Right now, the user being Bell. Mm -hmm. um, we also work closely with our flight safety officer, and we have an internal flight safety officer, obviously, and we see how we can align with our internal policies and standards. Bell has a, an objective of mission called Mission Zero, zero incidents, zero accidents, and uh, drones, drones are no exception. It definitely sounds like you have a very rigorous safety program. Absolutely. How do you work with operators to develop safe operational procedures? For the moment, Bell is operating um, our drones under an experimental uh, context, so we're not working directly with operators uh, at the moment. Um, but we have uh, used that stage to go and create our standard operating procedures, um, our, our maintenance manuals and our, our training manuals, everything in parallel so that we're ready to go once, once these things are, are I guess released into the wild. Um, so we based a lot of that on manned aviation procedures. Um, we've also done a lot of work with our, 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 our helicopter pilots uh, and then we've tailored it more to drones. Um, we've also worked closely with Transport Canada and their guidelines um, using the operational risk assessment for example uh, to ensure the integrity of our, our flight test operations. Does Bell also mitigate operational risk with aircraft features? Absolutely. Uh, Bell designs a lot of mitigating features, risk mitigating features into the aircraft itself. Uh, you may see other uh, products out there that opt for a parachute, for example. Um, we don't believe that's the safest way to control a descent to the ground. Uh, so instead, we focus our design on safety, reliability, and power available, emergency power available. This we achieve through a high level of system and component level testing. And we've also put a lot of emphasis on the safety of our, or the methodology, safety methodology behind our flight control computer. That includes things, uh, functions like containment, emergency protocols, uh, alternate landing zones, um, and recovery land landings, to name a few. And this, as I mentioned before, extends beyond just the operation. Uh, we look at how the payload will be handled by an operator on loading loading the aircraft, being safe from the rotors, um, and how they will either change batteries or charge batteries. Again, it has to be safe for everybody to use. So it seems like a lot of your safety features are taken from traditional aviation. So mm -hmm. how, how does your designing and development process for drones also incorporate traditional av aviation? Uh, 
We incorporate a lot of the traditional aviation features that we know very well. Uh, airframe design, uh, wings, rotors, things like that. We're very good at doing that. Uh, some areas where we've seen challenges um, are really on the miniaturization. We call it uh, s uh, system uh, size, weight and power, uh, SWAP as it's known. Uh, so that's taking a lot of those important components and bringing them down the size while maintaining the reliability and integrity um, and consuming less electrical power because everything's electrical. So there's a lot of, we've seen a lot of challenge in that. Uh, uh, so that's the everything from the electric integrated electric propulsion systems right down to the energy management and, uh, and storage. All this uh, while trying to minimize weight and striving to meet the reliability figures that make aviation as safe as it is today. Um, the other part of the equation is the autonomy side. Um, a lot is driven by new technology, uh, such as detect and void, which will be a pretty integral part of the puzzle. Uh, so Bell is working with partners uh, to test these type of technologies on the app vehicle. Another thing that's also in motion that, I, that, I, that, I, that I'm happy to see in the Canadian industry and it's worldwide as well um, is the development of, 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 of drone standards. So a lot like uh, Standard Council Canada is working with other industries to standardize procedures. Um, they're working to um, standardize things like drone testing procedures, airborne equipment qualification, operating procedures, uh, maintenance standards to name a few. And so I think this will really help uh, lead to a, a uniform uh, type of drone standard that will help uh, when meeting the regulator, regulators' uh, standards that they put forth in the future. So a critical component of drone safety is conducting flight tests. How do flight tests inform your manufacturing and development process? Uh, so we manage our, our test campaigns uh, through our, our manned aviation flight test campaigns. So we follow a lot of the same types of protocols that we do with uh, manned helicopters. Obviously there's areas where you can be flexible since there's not a, a human on board the aircraft. And again, it's a very tightly controlled environment for the, uh, the flight test campaign. That being said, we closely track issues and fixes along the way. And then we have implemented a very stringent uh, configuration management policy, which we do on Mountain Aviation as well. When that configuration comes out uh, of the flight test campaign, it's well defined, we know what it is. Um, and that's something that you would then hand off to manufacturing to go and produce. Anything that changes thereafter would have to have engineering buy-off to ensure that it still meets the intent of the original qualification campaign. So when can we expect the autonomous pod transport program to get off the ground? We do see commercial operations in the near future. We're flying right now. Uh, we're making great progress in our, in our flight test campaigns. Um, so it should be within the next few years we start to see a, a more real commercial and military application of these, uh, these drones. So that's it for our questions for Bell Textron. Thanks, Nick, for being here. We appreciate you joining us. It was my pleasure, Shane. We hope you found this webinar helpful. Fly safe and have fun. The other webinars in our Drone Safety Day pre-recorded webinar series will provide an overview of drone safety basics and explore the cool and innovative ways drones are being used in first responder operations across Canada. Be sure to check them out as well. Got questions about safe drone operations or something you may have seen or heard during our webinars? Tune into Transport Canada's Twitter chat to be held on November 13th at 1 p.m. We'll have a group of drone experts available on hand to answer any burning questions you may have live. Drone safety is everyone's responsibility. To celebrate Drone Safety Day, tell us what drone safety means to you. Share a photo, post, or story to your social media platforms with the hashtag Drone Safety Day. And check out Transport Canada's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to see what drone safety means to other Canadians.